All right, having a database with tables, at least we have one table, name list in there, is fun, but if you can't get the data back from the database, that doesn't make it very much fun. So we need to start with select. And this is really chapter two in the book, but we're going to have this smattered across a number of these little lessons. But let's start out with uh, just basically selecting back all the data. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the format that it comes back in. So let's just uh, select star from name list. And let's run that. And we get back some data. Now this could come back in a lot of different formats. If I go over here and I do, it'll actually come back in a nicer format when I do it at the command line because it's formatted in a table. But we need to know this other format that I'm seeing data come back in, and that's called JSON format or JavaScript object notation. And this is a, a dictionary or hash, depending on how you want to look at it, that starts with a squiggle bracket and ends with a squiggle bracket. The reason for knowing this format is that most data transferred in most modern applications, this is the underlying transfer mechanism. There are other mechanisms like comma separated value, XML, but this is a really common one these days. So the first thing that you notice about this output is that we have a doubly quoted tag named status that has success. So apparently these things ran and worked. And there's a set of messages. The first one is that this thing that we ran was okay, that this particular one was good, and it was the command that we ran, which was the select. The data is an array, that's a square bracket right there, of these little dictionaries or hashes, or objects, depending on what you want to call them, but they're name value pairs, and we have age, real name, and state, those are the columns in the table, and we have 22 Bob True in Wyoming. Now, it so happens that because I've inserted these in order, I'm getting them back in the same order that I've inserted them. There is no particular reason, nor should you have an expectation of that. There is a way to sort and order efficiently your data coming back in a uh, select statement. But the good thing about uh, JSON is that it's relatively humanly readable, at least when it's formatted with indentation. So I can actually look through here and I can see that we have names, ages, and states. And so that looks like a successful thing for that select. Let's look at some of the other selects and see what else we can do with it. All right. So you don't have to have star here in the select means you're getting all the columns you can just get some of the columns. For instance, we could do real name and state, okay, and just pick out a few of the columns. Quite often you'll find that there are tables that have a whole slew of columns and you're only after some values. So you can do that. This is gonna give you back just those two columns when we run it. If I don't make a typo and I got it successful and you'll see that now age is not in our set of data. We just have those two things being returned. The advantage of JSON data, since most stuff is JavaScript on the front end, is that it's really easy since this is just JavaScript data to be able to parse this and turn this into stuff that you can use in your front end. Now, these set of columns that we're getting back at the beginning of this is called the projected set of data. And when we do this projected set of data, we can actually apply functions to this. So I'm going to add to this previous select lower, which converts uppercase to lowercase, real name as, and I can tell, give it a new column name. And that's again in double quotes, which is, you can say column as, and you give it a new column name for your modified column that's been run through this lower function. So let's give that a spin. Oh, I forgot to come over here and do I'll just do real name, just one column. But you get the idea. Either way, we can sit here and we can select it and we can get the data back. So let's go over here and do one of these with a function. And we'll do And I think in the example I did in the text, I took off state, so let's take that out and let's run it. 
and we get back, you'll notice that Bob True and Bob True match up because the data is actually wrong. And here we have the lowercase name and the upper lowercase name being returned. So you can apply functions to your projected columns. And when you do that, you can modify the results. You can pass more than one parameter, but they have to come from the table that you're selecting from or from the set of rows that you're selecting from. So you can also select just some of the rows. Now, you'll notice that the format of a select is select projected columns from and a table. We can now add where a particular state is. Let's change this and run that particular thing. And we'll just take that out and we'll find out, we'll add in where the state is. and run it, and we find out that yes, when we run it, we have three people that are in the state of Wyoming. Notice that over here I did the state, but that's not in the projected columns. So I can actually use where columns that are not in the set of things that I am pulling from. Now, if you had 330 million people, you would want to do some stuff to make that efficient called indexes. We'll get to that. And if you did this and you did not do the correct case, you put in Wyoming as lowercase. I have an example here. I'm not actually going to run it. But you'd find out that you got zero columns back. And the reason for getting zero columns back is because there is no lowercase Wyoming. So let's change this to that example and run it. And you'll see that we get zero rows back. Now. The test case that I'm doing to test that we have the correct stuff for grading has uppercase Wyoming. So you need to put that in with uppercase Wyoming and get your 10 points. Um, this is the one you want to run to get the grade so that you've actually done an uppercase and returned rows. Now, that's the minimum basics of selecting. And when SQL was created, it was created for business people with the advent that they are the expectation, not advent, the expectation that, that people would use this directly from their business applications. And when you have one table and you have simple things like this, that works well. We're going to get into plenty select of select statements that require way more complexity which is why we have software people building these queries these days. But if it's just a simple thing like this, this works pretty well. And it's pretty easy to understand. You can kind of read that. Select real name from name list where state is Wyoming. And that works.